The 2010s have earned a reputation as the golden age of television. During the decade, broadcast networks and cable channels faced tough competition from new outlets. The competition from streaming services forced all of these outlets to up their game and deliver some of the most memorable moments in television history. The decade also saw many classic shows reach the end of their highly successful runs. Audiences have had to say goodbye to their favorite alcoholic ad executives, meth-making high school science teachers, and misfit community college students. Hi folks and welcome to The Binger. In this video, we're going to look at some of the most iconic TV shows that ended their time on our screens in the 2010s, only to live in our hearts forever. Let's get started. Game of Thrones No other show in the history of television so effectively combined political manipulation with dragons, magic, and ice zombies. Not to mention one of the most contentious series finales ever, Game of Thrones was based on the popular series of fantasy novels by George R. R. Martin. But the resemblance between Martin's works and J. R. R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings saga is superficial at best. While Rings was an adventure packed with elves, dwarves, and orcs, Thrones was about the all-too-human ambition that arises in a power vacuum. However, they did have one thing in common. The metal MacGuffin that was causing all the trouble throughout the series got melted down at the end. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend Why would a highly successful New York attorney move across the country to get closer to her teenage crush? The title explains it all. She's a crazy ex-girlfriend. The show's co-creator, Rachel Bloom, played Rebecca, the title character. Much of the show involved how Rebecca would deal with her work life and romantic entanglements, while still trying to manage her mental health. The show veered between a serious look at mental illness and an over-the-top musical, often in the same episode. The show had some of the worst Nielsen ratings of the decade. However, critical acclaim and a passionate cult following kept it on the air for four seasons until 2018. Mad Men In 2007, a lower-tier cable network known as American Movie Classics decided to go into the business of producing original series. Their first effort was a show with mostly unknown actors set in a New York ad agency during the 1960s. Unknown actors? Period piece? Anyone who thought that this series would take off must have been a madman. Instead, Mad Men became an instant cultural touchstone. The trials and tribulations of chain smoking, hard drinking ad man Don Draper captivated audiences for seven seasons. Throughout the series, Draper did and said what the audience wished they could get away with. The success of Mad Men allowed AMC to produce more original programming, including two more iconic names on this list. The Man in the High Castle What if the U.S. lost World War II? What if the Germans took control of the eastern U.S. while the Japanese controlled the western states? Sci-fi author Philip K. Dick used this premise for his 1962 novel, The Man in the High Castle. Producer Ridley Scott adapted the novel for television, and the series aired on the new Amazon Prime streaming service. The series revolves around Juliana, played by Alexa Davalos, who discovers a secret film that shows the Allies winning the war in a different timeline. Juliana joins the Resistance, a group of freedom fighters determined to oust the occupiers and take back America. The Big Bang Theory Contrary to popular belief, the Big Bang Theory hasn't been around since the dawn of the universe. It only feels that way. For 12 seasons, audiences have watched lovable nerds Leonard, Sheldon, Howard, and Raj evolve from socially awkward dweebs to slightly less socially awkward dweebs. Leonard went from pining for his neighbor Penny to marrying her and to starting a family with her. Howard went from a self-styled ladies man to a family man with his wife Bernadette. Raj went from selectively mute around women to someone in pursuit of a real relationship. Even Sheldon grew from routine restricted man-baby to husband and collaborator on a Nobel Prize with his wife, Amy Farrah Fowler. Orange is the New Black Who knew prison could be this funny? Orange is the New Black is the story of Piper Chapman, played by Taylor Schilling. Piper gets a 15-month prison sentence for hauling money for her drug-dealing girlfriend, Alex. 
played by that 70s show star Laura Prepon. The show also featured some veteran actresses including Star Trek Voyager star Kate Mulgrew and Russian Doll star Natasha Lyonne. Orange was one of the first Netflix shows to earn multiple Emmy nominations. It was the first show in history to earn an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Comedy Series one year and Outstanding Drama Series the next. Oh my Gorgon, so Actress Uzo Aduba, who played inmate Crazy Eyes, also won an Emmy for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series in 2015. The Office A documentary about workers at a paper sales company in Pennsylvania is not supposed to be this funny. But the US version of The Office made it work. How could you not love a dim-witted but well-meaning boss? Or a strident stickler of a salesman? Or a prankster who likes to flavor his jello with his co-worker's stapler? It even made That's What She Said a thing. You always left me satisfied and smiling. That's what she said! <laughs> the show hit it out of the park from its first season when it won the Primetime Emmy for Outstanding Comedy Series in 2006. From its start until it finished its run in 2013, The Office made an audience obsessed with electronics care about people who push paper. Sons of Anarchy Can you imagine Hamlet on a Harley? Kurt Sutter, the creator of Sons of Anarchy, did just that. Jax Teller, played by Charlie Hunnam, was the leader of the Sons of Anarchy Motorcycle Club. Redwood Original or Sam Crow The show also takes a lot of inspiration from Shakespeare's Hamlet. For instance, Jax believed that his stepfather eliminated his father and took over as the club president. That situation was much like how Hamlet's uncle took out his father and took over the kingdom. Jax's mother, played by Katie Seagal, married her husband's successor as head of the club, just like Hamlet's mother married his uncle. One of Jax's nicknames during the show is The Prince, a nod to the bard's troubled prince of Denmark. Downton Abbey For non-fans of the show, here's a bit of clarification. The British drama series Downton Abbey didn't take place anywhere near downtown London, nor did it involve anyone named Abbey. Instead, the show involved an aristocratic family, the Crawleys, and their servants at a country home in the north of England. The show starts in 1912 on the day the Titanic sank. On that day, English nobleman Robert Crowley learns that his cousin and nephew perished in the tragedy. The show ends on a much happier note, when Robert's daughter Edith marries Bertie Pelham, another aristocrat in 1926. In between, both the aristocrats and the servants get caught up into illicit affairs, political disputes, and social changes. Veep Where do you go when you were the female lead on one of the biggest hit sitcoms of the 1990s? You go to the White House. Well, almost. Former Seinfeld star Julia Louis-Dreyfus starred in Veep, a political comedy about a woman who ran for president. While she lost the nomination, she took the second slot on the ticket and earned the vice presidency and all the acclaim that it entails. The show revolves around how Vice President Selena Meyer deals with her staff. From the hyper-competent Amy to the loyal but naive Gary, the staff is a mix of personalities that sparks much of the comedy. The role became the most successful of Louis Dreyfus' career, as she earned six straight Emmy Awards for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series from 2012 to 2017. Halt and Catch Fire In the programming world, the expression Halt and Catch Fire describes any code that causes a computer to crash. In the TV world, the show Halt and Catch Fire did anything but crash with fans and critics. Just as AMC created a cool and stylish version of the 1960s with Mad Men, the network explored the dawn of computer culture with Catch Fire. The show looks at the go-go world of venture capitalism and tech startups. It also explores the culture clashes between the suits and the geek culture of computer programmers and engineers. From the dawn of the PC era to the launch of online gaming, Halt and Catch Fire shows how new technology changes how people relate to each other. Orphan Black Imagine that you had a clone. Now imagine that you had several, all raised in different parts of the world with different personalities, accents, and attitudes. The premise of Orphan Black gave a new look at the classic debate of nature versus nurture. Tatiana Maslany played Sarah Manning, an English woman who discovers that she is one of several clones from an experiment called Project Lita. 
Sarah meets clones from the US, Canada, and all over Europe while trying to uncover the secrets behind Project Lita. A highlight of the show came in the season 4 finale in which four of the clones, all played by Maslani, danced to a remix of Water Prayer by Adam Shake. And just in case you haven't already, subscribe to The Binger. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you can find out when we upload new videos. If you're on a mobile device, you can turn on notifications through YouTube settings. Now let's get back to the video. Key and Peele Comedians Keegan-Michael Key and Jordan Peele had previously worked together on the sketch show Mad TV. In 2012, the pair collaborated to create one of the best sketch comedy shows ever with Key and Peele. With classic sketches such as Football Player Introductions and Luther, Obama's Anger Translator, the duo crafted some of the funniest TV moments of the decade. The show went on to win two Primetime Emmy Awards and a Peabody Award before ending its run in 2015. Key has gone on to star in several feature films, while Peel has moved behind the camera as a writer, director, producer. Peel directed the modern horror suspense classics Get Out and Us, and he'll serve as producer of the upcoming Candyman remake, The Americans. Imagine, if you will, a nice suburban couple. They could be your next door neighbors. They could also be Russian spies. Set during the 1980s, The Americans follows Elizabeth and Matthew Jennings, played by Carrie Russell and Matthew Reese. This all-American couple are secretly deep-cover KGB agents who have been living in the U.S. for years. They even raise their son and daughter as Americans, keeping their real missions hidden from their children. And who's their nosy next-door neighbor? He's an FBI counterintelligence agent, of course. The show focused on the Jennings' struggle to maintain their identities and stick to their missions, even as their country was on the verge of collapse. Justified Crime novelist Elmore Leonard has had several of his works adapted for the big screen, including Get Shorty, Jackie Brown, and Out of Sight. Leonard's short story, Fire in the Hole, served as the basis for the FX crime drama Justified. Raylan Givens is a deputy U.S. marshal enforcing the law in his Kentucky hometown. Raylan runs afoul of local crime boss Boyd Crowder, as well as his ex-wife Winona. As with a lot of Leonard's stories, the good guys aren't always so good, and the bad guys aren't as bad as they seem. After the final episode aired in 2015, show creator Graham Yost told Variety, I'm gonna miss writing like Elmore. But it was a blast. We had a good time doing it. 30 Rock Have you ever wondered what goes on behind the scenes of a sketch show like Saturday Night Live? Former SNL writer and star Tina Fey answered this question and brought up several others with her hit show 30 Rock. The show featured the conflicts between head writer Liz Lemon, played by Fey, and NBC executive Jack Donaghy, played by Alec Baldwin. Liz had to deal with Jack's constant interference with the show, including Jack's decision to hire comedian Tracy Jordan, played by SNL alum Tracy Morgan. Unlike many other shows within shows, the show within 30 Rock was branded as an NBC product. The show even took its name from 30 Rockefeller Plaza, the address for NBC's New York headquarters. Dexter A serial violent criminal who works with the police to hunt down other serial violent criminals? That's the premise behind the hit Showtime crime drama, Dexter. Michael C. Hall played Dexter Morgan. By day, Dexter is a blood splatter analyst for the Miami Metro Police Department. By night, Dexter uses his keen mind and police connections to hunt down the most violent offenders. When the show wrapped in 2013, it was one of Showtime's biggest hits. The show spawned comic books, animated webisodes, and a video game. The series finale aired on September 22, 2013, and drew 2.8 million viewers, a record for any program in the network's history. House of Cards When Netflix announced it was moving from a mail-order DVD business model to a streaming service offering original shows, the TV landscape changed forever. The series Netflix chose as its launch title was the adaptation of a British political drama. The American version of House of Cards would cause a seismic shift in pop culture, both on and off-screen. Academy Award winner Kevin Spacey played Frank Underwood, a scheming politician who would eventually rise to the highest office in the land. When Spacey encountered personal and legal troubles, his character was written out of the show. The series continued with Robin Wright, who played Frank's wife Claire in the lead role. New Girl Fresh off her success in the 2009 film 500 Days of Summer, Zoe Deschanel took on her first lead role in an ongoing TV series with 2011's New Girl. Deschanel played Jess, a 
young teacher who moves into a loft with three guys. The show follows the romantic relationships among the characters, both inside and outside the loft. When sparks start flying between Deschanel's Jess and Jake Johnson's Nick, the feelings between the two roommates also sparks much of the series' tension. The show earned a strong following, including the popularity of its in-universe drinking game. According to the show's writers, True American is a drinking game with rules that change on the fly, when there are rules at all. The Good Wife When Alicia Florig finds out that her husband is at the center of a political scandal, she has to prove that she's more than a good wife. Alicia, played by former ER star Juliana Margulies, has to restart her life after 13 years as a stay-at-home mom. Her husband, Peter, played by former Law & Order star Chris Knott, was a prosecutor who went to prison on prostitution and corruption charges. During the series, she rebuilds her career as an attorney and even launches her own bid for elected office. Margulies earned Emmy Awards for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series for her role in 2011 and 2014. Community A brain, Annie, and an athlete, Troy, and a basket case, Abed, and a princess, Britta, and a criminal, Jeff. Community creator Dan Harmon, who would go on to launch Rick and Morty, focused his absurdist humor on a bunch of misfits at a small junior college. When former lawyer Jeff has to take classes at Greendale Community College, he forms a study group with Britta, Troy, Abed, Annie, Shirley, and Pierce. The show gained such popularity that Yahoo commissioned a sixth season in 2015 after NBC canceled it. While the final season gave fans half of their desired goal of six seasons and a movie, they're still waiting for the feature film. Broad City It's not often that a web series breaks through and becomes a hit show on a traditional TV network. But that's exactly what happened for show creators Ilana Glazer and Abby Jacobson with their Comedy Central show, Broad City. Glazer and Jacobson star as Ilana and Abby, two young women trying to make their way in New York. Abby seeks out ways to explore her artistic creativity, while Ilana just seeks out ways to avoid work and have fun. The show earned some rave reviews during its five-year run, even drawing comparisons to classics such as Seinfeld. Karen Valdi from Entertainment Weekly called the show deeply weird, weirdly sweet, and completely hilarious. Breaking Bad How does a high school teacher with a fatal cancer diagnosis spend his remaining time? If you answered, he creates a new type of drug and becomes a criminal mastermind, then you're either crazy or you're Breaking Bad creator Vince Gilligan. Just like its AMC cohorts Mad Men and The Walking Dead, Breaking Bad became one of the most iconic TV shows of the decade, if not all time. Brian Cranston abandoned his goofball persona from Malcolm in the Middle and became a menacing presence as Walter White, aka Heisenberg. You're goddamn right. The role earned Cranston four Emmy Awards for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series, including three in a row from 2008 to 2010. So, what do you think? Did we miss your favorite TV show that ended this decade? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to The Binger to get notified about our latest videos.